So it's always nice, an African vet, it's always nice having an African bird. Well, this is a really tame African grey. They do this roaring or growling when they're not feeling totally happy. And uh, it's unusual for a bird, any bird that's tame at home, that's on an owner's shoulder, that's loved and cared to be gently restrained in a towel is stressful. We're trying to be as gentle as possible. You can see the bird's not, not too distressed. No. So I'm going to start thoroughly looking at this bird. Um, her name's Cherry. She's three years old. African greys reach sexual maturity usually at four. Um, because she started plucking her feathers a little bit, I will speak to Yana about doing bloods and we'll get an idea of where her hormonal level is. But they're just pretty awesome birds. It's nice to have arguably one of the most intelligent non-human animals on the planet. I mean, obviously, they are, they are the really intelligent animals. But um, this is the species I learned to do bird work on. First bird I got bitten by was a grey. So, Phil, inexperienced vets think that growling can be respiratory? No, it's, it's, not, no. it's not respiratory. Mistake. So we're going to look at the back of the throat. Uh, we look at the coena, the coena papilla. She's actually been really good, but um, and they look pretty normal. The back of the throat is really good. So I've looked at the eyes. I've looked at the sinuses. I might just look again, so I can see right deep into the nose. And there's no powder or dander in the in the sinuses. They nice. They look nice and clear. The next part of the clinical exam, what I'm doing is just, we do this on any bird, not just for the further damaging behaviors. I'm going to feel the crop. The crop, the crop sits over here. The crop in this particular bird is um, approximately, uh, you're not going to see the crop through the feathers. It's approximately a third or a quarter full and she's been eating maybe porridge this morning. They only describe porridge and berries and it's still here. The crop is a storage organ. It's the first part of the esophagus. It's a, really just a big dollar pocket in the esophagus. And that's where um, the owner obviously has good purchases because although the birds attached to my fingers, the nails aren't super sharp. So he's probably got natural branch purchases and it's enabling mm -hmm. the nails to wear just the way they should. Um, he's got a leg band on which helps, helps, um, it helps identify. We, we don't like leg bands. They seem to catch, inevitably, invariably catch on toys and strings and cause problems. This is a thick stainless steel leg band, and the only way to take it off would be under general anesthetic. And I'll speak to the owner about it, but not today. It won't be part of today's list. Remember, you can put microchips in birds, and that's probably the best way to identify the AA. I'm now going down and looking at the chest, so I'm feeling the chest. I, feel, I, I actually feel the sternum and the muscling on the side. This bird, you can actually see, if, you, if, if I just separate, you can actually see the muscles on the side of the sternum. This bird's a lean, healthy weight. This is a, this is actually a small African grey. It feels like a pretty small specimen, but the body condition is very good for this particular size. So whatever its weight is, it's appropriate for the bird. I'm, we always feel the tummy, the abdomen. I'll have a look at the vent. I feel and it, feel, it feels okay. We'll have a look at the wings now. So you can see beautiful feathers, beautiful wings, and they're not clipped. We, um, which is good. And also look for feather, feather mites and lice, which are relatively uncommon. You might have caught one or two feathers in the side of the cage. That's why you often get that. Um, but the feathers look pretty good. We'll look on the other side now. So what's she in for, Phil? So she's in because she's been biting herself. Just okay, be Bobby. really careful. Yeah, Bobby. she's okay. She's okay. You know. It's okay, Bobby. Try to. She'll be trying to get free from me, so you just gotta be careful. So tell me where's she biting herself? No, uh, she doesn't okay. bite herself. Where's the plaque in the chest? Oh, I'm just on the chest a bit. Just on the, chest. On the crop. Basically, just above the crop. So I might actually very lightly wet the area. Yeah. Taking a little bit of. Yeah, up, yeah, up high up, yeah, about there. Yeah. 
And it's only just started. Yeah, just uh, I think I've just nipped it in the bug catching it the last few days, especially. It's hard to tell when they're just pruning, and it's only when I noticed the feathers that, that they were sort of cut and jagged. That's when I looked and noticed straight away I started to pay attention. Her brother is probably more bald. Where does her brother live? Uh, Hobart. That's right, Terry. So, when we have something that's starting like this, this is what I'd like to do with your bird. Um, yeah. I think it'd be very reasonable if you've got a bird that's about three years old to um, take a little bit of, take a blood sample and do a very basic screen, which looks at the body organs and... Yeah, we'll do that. Whatever you doc, you have to do, do. Okay. Is it taking blood, Phil? Yes, we're going to take a blood sample. There's usually a small area on the neck where there are no feathers. So we've got a small amount of blood, we've taken half a mil, so it's liquid gold. So we process it very gently, very quickly. And we keep an incubator, we keep a sterile incubator in the prep area, so that when we take a blood sample, we can put the bird down and straight away um, do our blood. So we mix it about nine times. I'm gonna be doing a beak and feather test, so I'm gonna take um, a tiny bit of blood and put on a piece of filter paper. It's a PCR test, pretty much like the COVID test, and it's going to go off. So um, you can just see what we do. Once, as soon as we've taken blood, because we take bloods alone, and because we take bloods with no anesthetic or sedation, it's just so convenient having a little incubator just right by the um, by the prep area, and it's it's a really convenient thing to be able to process the blood straight away. And now I'm going to treat. What I'm going to do, we're going to crop feed the birds. You can watch me do a crop feed. I want to give the birds some. We're going to use some moxidectin, which is a mite lice treatment, but the side effect, it's a worm that does general things. Um, so I'm going to put the medication in before I take the bird out, and we can do everything at once. So, let me do so we're going to be as gentle as we can. I don't want Cherry to be stressed at all. Come on, Cherry Blossom. So, for those watching the video, we will get bloods back. So the blood screen is going to do things like triglycerides, tri um, cholesterol, proteins, liver function, kidney function, red cell count. I'll have a pretty good idea where we're going with um, hormonal at least. Because we've got to rule out hormonal. This is a blood test I've taken for beak and feather. At the same time, it's a viral test. Open wide, please. So it's got to be, as you know, they, they can move their tongues and each and the upper and lower beak independently. So that's a crop feed. It's a lot of nutrition, vitamin A, amino acids that may be lacking, although the owner's got a really good diet. And you can also see how relatively straightforward and easy it is to crop feed a bird. So small little, I mean, you can actually see it away. He's got small lesions on his beak here, which... Um, Okay, so Mel, so when he gets, he'll be back in a period of time. What we've done with this bird, which is part of the whole treatment. So any bird, especially an African grey that's feather plucking, needs a behavioural visit. And we've got Mel from Works for Birds that's going to do a behavioural visit because it's important to augment the veterinary, uh, the veterinary treatments and the medical treatments. We want to know that the home environment's appropriate, that the the owner's interaction with the bird is appropriate, that the toys and stimulation, etc., etc. And obviously, we want to rule out medical disease. 
many of you are watching and the elephant in the room is do we put a collar on the bird and the answer is we do use collars and we've got incredible collars designed that are very comfortable and probably in the next in the next period of time if we don't get a response the collar will be next